Y'all ready for this? Are you ready? 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 Barbie basketball. Get ready. Are certainly ready. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tyler Kamiati. And I'm Logan Repko. And this is another exciting edition of WHHS Channel 96 Sports. That's right. Tonight, the, this game is featuring the Harvey Red Raiders and the Geneva Eagles, both in first place in the uh, NEC with undefeated records. That's right. We're looking at two teams with very different styles of play. The Geneva Eagles have a reputation for slowing down the pace of the game and making many passes before they take a shot. Whereas your Harvey Red Raiders oftentimes like to run the ball down the floor. They utilize the fast break very well, and uh, they, they shoot from the gun a lot. That's right. They are known for their uh, running gun, uh, slam dunk style of play, and uh, it served them well so far, as has the Geneva Eagles style of play this year. That's right. The Geneva Eagles also are known for their Princeton style offense, wherein they will bring their big man. This year they don't have much size. They have one player who, who's their key big man. He's about six foot three. What they're going to try and do is bring him up to the top. That allows their smaller players to use the baseline as our big players will be drawn out with their big man. Which is a decent uh, strategy because the Red Raiders have a size advantage on almost anybody that they play. Very much. This is and this is the first year that we've had that. So we're our, it's benefited us very much this far. We're off to a great start, six and zero. Oh, and tonight we look to make it seven and zero oh against the Geneva Eagles. Before we get underway, let's look at the starting lineups for the visiting Eagles. We have number 12, Kyle Altier. Number 20, Alex Sturkey. Number 22, Nate Luoma. Number 44, Kyle Kowalczyk. And number 54, Jake Coy. And for your Harvey Red Raiders, we have number 21, Andrew Booth. Number 32, Julie Mangano. Number 34, Chris Crawford. Number 24, number 20, Morgan Lewis. And number 22, Scott Aston. Scott Aston, the only per player in that group under six feet. That's right, but what he doesn't have in height, he certainly makes up for in speed. Always going to be one of the quickest players on the floor. Excellent, has excellent vision of the floor. He can make the pass to just about anyone. He always finds the open man, it seems. And he's also, he's also a big scoring threat. He's got a tremendous jump shot. That's right. Every single one of these uh, starting five is, is an essential part to the Raiders' offense and, and really can perform well on any given day. And as we're underway, the Raiders win the tip as Chris Crawford elevates over Jake Coy. Mangano has the ball on the wing. Up top to Crawford. And Booth pulls up for the inside jumper. No good. That's a rebound by number 22 late Nate Luoma. So after getting the first possession, the Raiders come away with nothing. Uh, seven minutes and 30 seconds, uh, 30 seconds into this uh, first quarter. Sturkey passing over to uh, Coy. And that's Nate Luomo who fires for three, no good. Ball's batted around. And it goes out of bounds on Jake Coy. That'll be Red Raider basketball. And the Geneva Eagles certainly showing uh, that the style of play uh, Tyler predicted was accurate. They passed several times on this series before taking that first shot. Now, this is this is going to be a big game for us. Uh, this is uh, we haven't seen many close games. Many of our games, it's not uncommon for us to win by you know 20 points or more. This one, it's looking to be a little bit closer as Julian Mangano fires the three and drains it. That's right. But if we uh, if we hope to go far this season, this is a kind of a must-win game for us. We got to prove to ourselves we can beat the uh, the formidable opponents before we can beat the really tough ones. Mangano with the inside jumper, and he hits that as well. They didn't give him a three on the first one. Mangano's got the first four points of the basketball game. The Raiders up four nothing with 6:34 left. Red Raiders come, have come out showing kind of a pressure defense. I think they're hoping to disrupt the the mellow uh, pass a lot kind of game the Geneva Eagles have going on. That's right. They're doing exactly what Coach Hartman said they might do, is uh, use, utilizing the diamond press and then falling back into a 3-2 zone. The zone will be effective against the Princeton offense, whereas it'll keep our big men down low. And it's not, there's not so much focus on uh, sticking with your man. Especially with the excellent defensive skills that the Raiders have. They can play any kind of defense, but especially effective uh, 
against the Geneva Eagles is this uh, zone that they're playing. Five minutes and 50 seconds now. <laughs> I remember last game against, uh, I'm sorry, last game they held a team scoreless for almost two minutes. That was Edgewood, I believe. Uh, Jefferson. Jefferson, I'm sorry. And that was number 20, Alex Sturkey, finding himself in trouble in the paint. And that's a Red Raider possession of the basketball. Stops the clock with 541. As I was saying, for two minutes, the Jefferson Falcons passed the ball around on their side of the court. Red Raiders did not allow a score. That, that's right. They, uh, I believe that happened in the third quarter of that game. That game, that quarter, the Falcons only scored two points the entire quarter. Just excellent defense coming out of the Raiders and a little bit hasty on offense for the Falcons. This is going to be a very busy week for Red Raider basketball. Tonight, we have the visiting Geneva Eagles. On Friday, we'll travel to Edgewood to take on the Edgewood Warriors. And then on Saturday, we've got one of the biggest games of the season in those crosstown rivals of those Riverside Beavers. Riverside, not as impressive this year as they have been in the past. So I would look for the Raiders to win. However, it is a Riverside game you never know. That's right. And that's Andrew Booth who puts it up and in. Five minutes and 14 seconds now in this first quarter. Red Raiders up six to nothing, playing a smothering defense and grinding out on offense. Not exactly making it always look pretty, but hey, they're out by a, by a pretty big margin. Altier with the ball up top, over to Sturkey. Down into Luoma. Morgan Lewis coming out of the zone defense a little bit. Doing a good job applying the pressure and keeping keeping the Falcons outside. And Morgan Lewis nearly comes off with the pick, but the ball is taken back. So by, time uh, I'm sorry, time continues to tick down in this first quarter with Geneva still holding on to the ball. Four minutes and 24 seconds now. Shot finally taken. Luoma fires the three, bounces high off the rim and over the backboard. And on the out of bounds, that'll be the Red Raider ball. Still all the same faces on the floor for the Raiders, nearly halfway through the quarter. And on the fast break, that's number 44, Kyle Kowalczyk, and who lays it up and in. Yeah, an ill-advised pass by Scott Aston led to that right there. I'm sure you all can see it. No need to dwell on it anymore. Aston over to Mangano. Booth fighting for possession, or fighting for position, rather. Aston comes up with the ball on the floor and loses it to number 20, Sturkey. Sturkey takes it the length of the floor and lays it up and in. Now the Raiders are up by two, 64, 338 left in the first quarter. Red Raiders are really pushing that offense. I'm kind of surprised that they've been known for running, but uh, pressing against five guys already down on defense isn't that well advised. There's Julian Mangano with another two points. Out of the eight points the Red Raiders have, he's accountable for six. So that puts the Raiders up eight to four with three minutes and 16 seconds in this first quarter. That was a nice move for uh, Mangano with a little V cut in towards the hoop. That allowed him to lose his man and get, get uh, Aston to give him the ball. Ooh, and Morgan Lewis goes up and misses the dunk. He was in a lot of pressure and the Geneva fans are taunting him a little bit, but uh, you know what? Just wait, guys, because he's going to bring it back, and it's going to be hard. Yeah, I think a couple mouths fell open, though. Uh, you don't usually see Morgan Lewis no. with dunk. That's all right. We're over it. Luoma fires the three and drains that. Wide open shot. you got to expect a varsity player to make those. Yeah. And that's exactly what Luoma did. The Eagles have moved the score to within one. Raiders only on top, eight to seven, 222 left in the first quarter. It, it's kind of a, it, it's a shock to see a game, a game like this where it's really just a, you know, shot for shot and steal for steal, where most of the other games this season, the Raiders have a, uh, an incredible lead by now, 2-12 left in the first quarter. 
it's uh, this is going to be a good game for the Raiders. Uh, it's good for them to see some competition, show what they're really made of, and get some good practice. I agree. Meanwhile, uh, Andrew Booth made his uh, foul shot. It's now nine to seven. You uh, know, going along with what you were saying, I think for a lot of the games they've been playing, it's kind of been almost practice for the Raiders. Yeah. I think th it's good for them, like, to have some regular competition. We'll, we'll hope that they can see that down the stretch before they uh, go to the state tournament. Yeah, that's, that's right. It's hard for a team to improve if they don't have competition. I see a lot of improvement in this game. The time now under two minutes, 156. Raiders up 11 to seven. That's Coy who fired for three, no good. Aston really pushing the ball up court. Swings it over to Booth. Booth taking a baseline. And I'm not quite sure what the whistle was. But that's uh, Eagle basketball. No indication of a foul. Uh, looks like somebody may have stepped out of bounds with it. That, that could have been. Booth was awfully close to the baseline. Big jump stop by Sturkey. Down into the corner, and way up top, uh, looks like that's Luoma. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Altier. Kyle Altier with the ball up top. Over to Sturkey in the corner. Kyle called on Andrew Booth. Booth, one of those players, not a afraid to get in there and uh, throw some elbows. Kind of reminiscent of Andre Smith, who is not playing basketball this year, but those two people kind of uh, yeah, hack, man. They'll, they'll take yeah. a couple fouls for the team. Yeah. Both very physical players, and that's that's necessary. Every, every team needs a few of those guys. Sturkey over to the new face on the court. That's uh, Kyle DeJesus. Fifty-two seconds on the clock. Red Raiders still playing that stifling defense. Geneva having trouble again putting up even a shot. Altier, the ball facing Lewis and Mangano. Here's where we see some of that Princeton. Offense, bringing Coy up top. So a minute and a half of passing leads to nothing for the Geneva Eagles, and the Red Raiders take possession again. 24 seconds, I'm thinking they're looking for just one last shot right here. Lewis swings it way over to Mangano. Mangano into the corner to Aston. 12 seconds. Lewis looks like he's gonna pull up, gives it off to Aston. Aston fires for three, no good. Whistle blown. And that foul called on number 32, Julian Mangano, who's first of the night. Second team foul. Both teams at two fouls apiece. Eight seconds left in the first quarter. Number 20, that's Alex Sturkey, is coming out. I believe number 10, Jamie Altier, is coming back in. And... As Nate Luoma goes to the ground, that ends the first quarter. Your Red Raiders on top by four, 11 to seven. It's so been a I'm, yeah, sorry, both teams came out firing and this has been a really good game so far. Red Raiders being challenged, but you know, then again, they're playing really great defense. That's uh, right. Not letting the Geneva Eagles get any shots in. Yeah. They've uh, kept Morgan Lewis fairly quiet. Their coach said that all they really wanted to do with Lewis was make him work for all of his shots. Sometimes he just makes it look so easy, but uh, they really want to, you know, put the pressure on him and make him make him earn everything that he gets. And Mangano has had, been having a great first quarter, but uh, why don't we take a look at our sponsors right now? Mike Rowan Concrete, Fisher Building and Interiors. Next we have Flame and Grill, Manor. McMillan Builders and Plumbing Supply. Lens Reliable Heat and Air Conditioning. And Palutro Insurance. Scores Fun Center and Lasertron. Sheer Style Barbershop. And Silvestro's. For great food, make it Silvestro's Depot Cafe. Once again, we have the Harvey Drumline here in attendance, adding some flavor to the atmosphere. That's right. Uh, 
Anthony Waits, Matt Carmody, and Mitchell King providing the uh, entertainment, the beat that you hear in the background. Pumps up the crowd, kind of like the, uh, the Tom Tom player at Jacobs Field. Yeah. We've got our own crew of John Adamses. And Devon Johnson checking in the game. He'll be in for Andrew Booth. So now we have two sophomores, both six, well over six feet tall, and Jeff Spikes and Devon Johnson. Spikes in for Crawford, of course. Jamie Altier, the ball up top. Coy now with the ball. So the Eagles showing patience, but you got to think they're getting frustrated, not getting any shots off. I think they're used to it personally. And there's a big block by Jeff Spikes. He tells Jake Coy, not in my house. And there's Spikes, the big man, put it up and in. Jeff Spikes, really exciting to watch when he gets on a roll. He yeah. just threw that little jump hook up after making that big block. Great, great play in 15 seconds by Jeff Spikes. Nice pass over to Coy, but Coy finds himself trapped between Devon Johnson and Jeff Spikes. Raider ball. Quick pass in intended for Spikes, I believe. Picked off by Geneva. And Nate Luoma loses the ball out of bounds. Tipped away by Devon Johnson, apparently. Uh, I'm sorry. Nobody liking that one. At first, uh, even some of the Geneva players on the floor thought it wasn't going their way, but the ref gave it to him. So that stops the clock with 647. And the refs are deliberating. Not sure exactly what's going on. And it will go to the Geneva Eagles. As you can hear, the fans not pleased about that one at all. No. We're sorry there, we lost visual for a brief moment. Or who knows, maybe it's just our TV. That's number 44, Kyle Kowalsik firing for three, no good. And in, in some chaos underneath the basket, ball's turned over by Geneva. It's going Harvey's way. Chris Crawford checking back in. Uh, that will be for Julian Mangano. So Red Raiders have three big men in now and uh, two, two uh, ball handlers right now. Aston over to Lewis. Lewis fires for three. Drains that. So Morgan Lewis, he, I'd say he earned that one. <laughs> and Chris Crawford looks to block everything out of DeJesus', De De Jesus shot. <laughs> but uh, gets a little bit of body there. So after opening up a nine point lead, Red Raiders, uh, take that foul, that is their third. It's 16 to seven. Time is stopped with six minutes and 10 seconds. That's Chris Crawford's first foul of the night. DeJesus has plenty of time to practice at home. His family is uh, known for, <laughs> figuratively speaking of course, owning half of Geneva and they have their own indoor basketball court. So he's got plenty of practice. I'm sure that's a nice advantage to have. And he converts one of his free throws. We're sorry, we're having some technical difficulties here. And uh, some camera problems, but right now what's going on, we've got number 12, Kyle Altier with the ball. And his brother Jake fires for three, no good. Morgan Lewis stops and pops from the free throw line, no good. But he tips it back in. Grabs his own rebound to put it in. It was a beautiful thing. The fans are on their feet. And a timeout is called by the Geneva Eagles. Morgan Lewis has just helped the Raiders open up a 10 point lead. Uh, five minutes and 31 seconds, the clock is stopped. Why don't we take a look at our sponsors while well, we have the chance, those people that enable us to bring these games to you. Well, as we mentioned earlier, we are having a yeah. slight technical difficulties. Uh, so why don't we take a minute to talk about the big score of the night, Julian, Julian Mangano. Mangano. Well, he's 
I'm sorry, we are just received word that we will be able to see our sponsors, so uh, <laughs> why don't we go to them now? All right, we have Micro and Concrete. Next, we have Fisher Building and Interiors. Flame and Grill. McMillan Builders Supply Incorporated. Lose Reliable Heat and Air Conditioning. Pelutro Insurance. Scores Fun Center and Lasertron. Shear Style Barbershop. And Silvestro's Depot Cafe for great food. Make it Silvestro's. Silvestro's been around Painesville area for a very long time. An institution. We ask that you patronize every one of our sponsors. Without them, we wouldn't be able to bring you this broadcast. Yeah, they really help keep us going. And we rejoin you much as the first half is gone with the Geneva Eagles struggling to get a shot. Chris Crawford makes the steal. That was Kowalczyk who lost it to Crawford. Aston pushing the ball up. And Andrew Booth gets called with the travel. Maybe took a stutter step or something. It wasn't anything too blatant. But he did, he did appear to move before uh, he put the ball on the ground, so the refs are going to call that. Yep. Kyle Altier with the ball. With the Coy, Coy up top. Altier to Sturkey. Luoma spinning off Mangano. No, nothing's happening for him. And here's the patience. And as Coy has the ball going through the lane, he's swatted from behind by Chris Crawford. Crawford's first of the night. That's, his, I, second, that's yeah. his second. They hadn't changed the scoreboard yet. I do recall the other one where he uh, all, was also going for the block, but maybe got a little too much body. And something we haven't seen, p players getting into foul trouble. That could be a big hurt down the stretch for the Red Raiders. Yeah, just 4.35 left in the first half. And some of our key players are already with two fouls. So with that foul shot, number 54, Jake Coy brings the score to 18 and nine in favor of the Raiders. Time is stopped with four minutes and 35 seconds. Coy nails the second. And into the game is number 52, Alex Ritchie. And to replace Kyle Kals Kalizic. Scott Aston bringing the ball up, facing Altier. Altier hits the pick off Booth. And Chris Crawford tips the ball back in. Brings back his playground skills and takes away our, puts the tip in. Altier up top, over to Coy. And Altier fires from just inside. And that's number 52, Alex Ritchie, who follows it up and puts it in. And how he managed to put that in over three pillars, I do not know. Yeah. But that's two points for the Geneva Eagles, and the score is 20 to 12. And Chris Crawford is fouled as he puts the ball up and in. He's going to the charity strike for one more. Crawford, a consistent foul shooter. This is looking promising. And I would really think this is kind of a night for Chris Crawford to shine. He's playing against a team that's a good team. I mean, a, a very strong team, but uh, they're a lot smaller than him. I would think that he could just dominate. keep going paint. to the well, yeah, and, over, and dominating. Morgan Lewis uses his hops, spins from the lane, fires, and a foul is called. Lewis bumped someone as he was turning. Jeff Spice checking in the game for Chris Crawford. And Sturkey with the ball just across half court. Andrew Booth gets called with the reach. Pretty blatant foul. I think it was obvious for everyone to see. That is Booth's third of the night. So he's in <laughs> a lot bigger foul trouble than anyone else on the Red Raider team. He's really going to need to step it down a little bit. He looks to finish out this game. And this is some of the adversity we're talking about. The Red Raiders don't always have to deal with this. They can always just rotate new players in, but you know, if their starters get down late in the game, that could be a factor. 
Luoma fires the three. No good, it jumps out on him. Jeff Spikes gives the ball to Lewis. Lewis with the nice pass through the lane to Booth. A little too low, maybe. And Booth kicks it out. So uh, Raiders still up by 10, 22 to 12 with three minutes and 10 seconds. But you still get the thin that this game uh, could go, you know, it's not out of reach for any team. Definitely not. Luoma dishing the ball baseline to Coy. And Coy's no good. But he's fouled and he's going to the line. Some extra playing going on after the whistle. Uh, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure that might be a factor later in the game too. Yeah. We've I've noticed that after the whistle's blown, there's been a couple of elbows thrown. Yeah, both both teams recognize that this is a big game. They have to really exert their dominance. And Coy at the line again, nailed two in a row his last time. And does so this time as well. Scott Aston dribbling around up top. Short pass over to Booth. Mangana with the ball up top, dribbling around. And he gets a block called by number 22, Nate Luoma. That is uh, Luoma's first night and 14 foul for the Geneva Eagles in much better shape than the Red Raiders are. They're already in the penalty. Yeah, they are. Seven fouls already for the Red Raiders. Red Raiders having to work for a point, something you don't always see. But another foul called. This time I believe it was on number 51. I'm sorry, number 52, Alex Ritchie. That's the 15th foul on the floor. Morgan Lewis has the ball out of bounds underneath the basket. And there's their loop pass deep. And as Mangano looks for spikes, a little bit off target. Spike's not very aggressive at the ball at all, though. He got no. kind of pushed in the back, and he just went with it. Not a very good play by the uh, sophomore big man. Might have been looking for the foul, but either way, got to go to the ball. And that's Luoma who fires from a little bit behind the backboard, it seems. Still drops it in. Raiders now up 22-16, 1.55 left in the first half. It's a pretty fast-paced game we're seeing here. Not a, uh, not a whole lot of timeouts being called. That's right, especially a team like Geneva Eagles, you would think that time would drag, but there's hardly right, right. been any stoppage of the clock. Yeah, I think part of their uh, careful offense is that, you know, they don't take the shots, therefore the ball's staying out of heavily trafficked area, and we aren't seeing too many fouls. Meanwhile, a nice, fundamentally sound pass from Scott Aston to Andrew Booth leads to an easy layup. That's the way you gotta do it if you wanna win games. And Alex Ritchie, Fires and drains. Immediately answered. So now one minute and seven seconds, the Red Raiders up 24 to 18. As Aston fires, no good. Gives it off to Mangano in the corner. And Nate Luoma comes down with the ball. And the refs blowing a whistle, I believe, on Mangano. Mangano, you plays such a smooth game. You rarely see him get called for a foul. Even that one was questionable. He, Got his hips in front of the defender, but might have got turned the corner a little bit on. Yep. That's his second of the night. And that'll put Nate Luoma at the at the foul line. Hits his first. Twenty-four nineteen now with fifty-six seconds to go in the first half. Geneva Eagles, Luoma. excellent at the foul line. Uh, you obviously don't see that in a lot of other teams. Yeah. Foul line uh, will win you a lot of games that you know you would otherwise lose. So Mr. Walling stresses that with the JV. And you see the Raid Raiders are very good at shooting uh, free throws, as are the Geneva Eagles. Yeah, you know, commenting that foul shot shooting from the free throw line it can really make or break a game. With as many fouls as the Raiders are putting on the board tonight, it really could prove to be a huge factor in this ball game. Absolutely. And we're seeing Mick Rowan come into the game to replace Julian Mangano. 
So Rowan's slowly starting to see more and more playing time as the season grows on. Mick Rowan and team captain and fan favorite, they all like to see a Mick Rowan hustling around in his various headbands that he wears. Yeah, kind he of needs enjoyed. it with that long hair. That's right. So 22 seconds now, Red Raiders up 24 to 20. Lead has been cut. It was once as high as 10 points. Geneva Eagles looking for the last shot. And there's a nice trap in the corner. Gives it up to looking for uh, Altier, but Morgan Lewis picks it off. Now the Eagles, ooh, and the Eagles trying to trap Lewis. And looks like Luoma may have caught a whistle or something. He's still on the floor. You see on the, he was on the bottom of your screen. Trainer coming over. Foul will go against the Eagles. He is moving though. It doesn't look to be anything serious. I'm sure he just caught an elbow. Not seeing any blood. Why don't we take a quick look at our sponsors while, uh, while he's getting up and they're making sure he's okay. First, we have Mike Rowan Concrete. Fisher Building and Interiors. Flame and Grill. McMillan Builders Supply Incorporated. Lewis Reliable Heat and Air Conditioning. Pelutro Insurance. Scores Fun Center and Lasertron. Sheer Style Barbershop. And Silvestro's for great food. Make it Silvestro's Depot Cafe. Well, I'll tell you, when I saw uh, Altier, or that was Luoma, when I saw Luoma go down, and he was kind of clutching his face. All that was running through my head was LeBron James. He was just out for about a week or so with a, he's got a broken cheek that he caught in a, in a game where he was uh, cutting through the paint and caught an elbow from Dikembe Mutombo. But to conclude the story, the Red Raider, I mean, I'm sorry, the Cavaliers had four days off, as I'm sure you know, so it didn't really hurt the Cavaliers. No. And it doesn't appear, Luoma doesn't appear to be hurt for the Geneva Eagles. Uh, number 24, I believe. Oh, uh, that's Kyle DeJesus is checking into the game. Luoma, of course, sitting on the bench for a while, recomposing himself. Five seconds left, one shot for the Raiders. Lewis gonna take it. No good, fires long. And as time expires, your Red Raiders are up by perhaps the uh, smallest lead we've seen going into the half all season, 24 to 20. This Geneva Eagles team is definitely proving to be to be a challenge that we haven't seen yet this season. That's right, and uh, fouls I'm sure are going to play a big part as they haven't all season. But uh, you know, as we get into tournaments and stuff like that, we'll have to start being conscious of it. That's right. Well, uh, while we've got a moment here, yeah, why don't we take a look at our sponsors? We have Micro and Concrete, 919 Skinner Avenue in Painesville, 413-7531. Uh, Fisher Building Interiors in Painesville, 350-3882. Flame and Grill on uh, Menor Avenue, 352-3000. Next, we have McMillan Builder Supply Incorporated in Painesville, 357-5822. Lose Reliable Heat and Air Conditioning on High Street in Fairport Harbor, 352-0974. Palutro Insurance in Painesville, celebrating 50 years of service. Scores Fun Center in Lasertron at 65 Normandy Drive in Painesville, 354-2000. Sheer Style Barbershop on North St. Clair Street in Painesville, 392-2399. And last we have Silvestro's Depot Cafe at 470 Railroad Street in Painesville, 354-3851. So still in halftime, uh, we've seen a first half like we haven't seen yet this year. Red Raiders on top 24 to 20. And on that note, I'm Tyler Kamiati. And I'm Logan Repco. We'll be right back. And Logan Repko back here with Tyler Kenyatti. We're opening the third quarter action. And the Red Raiders up 24 to 20. Things are just about to get underway. Starting five back on the floor for the Raiders as Jeff Spike and Devon Johnson and McRone have checked out. Yep, this is closer and lower scoring than any game we've seen this season. Geneva playing very smart basketball. And there's Morgan Lewis. We saw it coming back. 
And you can't see it, but the Red Raider fans holding up uh, 10 signs that they make for whenever a dunk is uh, is performed. Great pass by Scott Aston right there, I gotta add. Yeah, no look pass, just penetrated the defense. Yeah, the Geneva fans had nothing to say to that one. They were taunting him a little bit for missing a similar dunk early in the first half. But um, he answered that. And the foul is called. Foul on number 32, uh, Julian Mangano. His, his third of the night now. And that was Julian Mangano talking to the ref just beyond the pitcher. Uh, advised to get back to the line by the ref. I'm sensing some uh, some tempers rising right here. Yeah, little things are getting a little bit hostile. None of the speaking with some of the spectators here tonight. Uh, they seem they seem to think the refs, you know, that they're throwing things a little bit more in favor of one uh, one of the teams. You see that in a lot of highly contested games. I think the the refs have done done a decent job. Maybe I, some calls. I think so. Yeah. Here. But for by and large, they uh, I, I think they've handled the game pretty well. Morgan Lewis looks into Booth cutting through the lane. Aston taking the ball baseline, swings it out to Booth. Booth into the paint. And Aston comes up with it. Over to Mangano, fires the three. But a foul is called as uh, Scott Aston gets hit with the offensive foul. I can actually find fault with that one. I thought you got to call that one on defense. His legs were moving. Yeah. Scott Ashton just showing some aggressiveness and got, got hit with I, what I think was a bad foul. So now we have Sturkey. And that's Altier with the ball up top. Red Raiders continuing to be a blanket on defense. Nothing going on for the Geneva Eagles. Altier again with the ball. Now Sturkey. Time. Seems to be Altier Sturkey, Altier Sturkey. Just handling the ball up top. And there's Kowalczyk, goes into the lane, fires the three, and he's swatted by Chris Crawford. That stops the, to uh, stops the clock with six minutes, 10 seconds. Red Raiders up 26 to 21. The Red Raider cheering section on that one, holding up their rejected cards. The uh, cards, the creations of Corey Young, they got pen on the front and R on the back for rejection. Uh, it really helps, I think, to add another element to the Red Raiders' uh, excitement at all the basketball games, as a number of things do. And there's Booth who spins, throws it up, and puts it in. Nobody coming back on offense for the Geneva Eagles. And a timeout is called by Geneva in order to uh, save themselves from turning the ball over. They were about to run out of time there. So maybe we're seeing the Geneva Eagles uh, blink first and uh, stare down. That is this game. But while we have a chance, why don't we take a look at our sponsors? Raiders up 28 to 21 here in the third quarter. That's right. And uh, first off, we have Mike Rowan Concrete. Next, we have Fisher Building and Interiors. Next, we have Flame and Grill. McMillan Builders Supply Incorporated. Lose Reliable Heat and Air Conditioning. Pelutro Insurance. Scores Fun Center and Lasertron. Sheer Style Barbershop. And Silvestro's. Back underway, Altier has the ball facing Aston. Altier dribbling over to the wing. That's Luoma, who took a seat in the first. And Morgan Lewis. <laughs> Goes up, they gave it to him. Morgan Lewis taking it off. He was he was in traffic there. He had a man on him, and he was still able to throw it down. That's got to be intimidating to see a man like that that can split double coverage. Oh, yeah. And a technical foul is ensuing. Temper's obviously flaring, and the Geneva Eagles uh, any, no indication who the foul is on. Yeah. But Morgan Lewis will be shooting to... Push the lead at 10. It's now 30 to 21, and time is stopped with five minutes and 29 seconds. So that was that was a, a play that put the energy back in the crowd. And Lewis connects on his first. 
again shooting technical free throws. We didn't see where they uh, where the technical occurred. I believe it was on uh, number 22, Nate Loma, but uh, not really sure because there were two fouls called simultaneously. Right. The Red Raiders fans are really in it now. And after the technical, the Red Raiders retain possession. Crawford nearly comes down with it, loses it to Altier. Kowalczyk goes into the lane, to the hole, and puts it in. He was fouled, and he's going to the charity strike. And as I was saying earlier, the Red Raiders really have a lot of, lot of people that come to these games that pump up the intensity. You know, the drum line, you know, all the fans. It's just, it's just a really great experience. It's, it's kind of a carnival, at, not a carnival, but it's a really exciting atmosphere. Definitely. This is an exciting team to watch. Everybody wants to come out. Always a packed gym here in John D'Angelo Gymnasium. Meanwhile, the uh, score has gone to 31-24. Raiders up by seven. That's right. Time to stop with five minutes and 15 seconds on a call going against number 32, Julian Julie Mangano. Mangano. His fourth. Cat calls raining down from the crowd. Not really liking that call either. Indication uh, not really clear from the, red, uh, from the refs. So Mangano, who started the game off red hot, dropping six out of the first eight points, is uh, taking a seat on the bench. Yeah, falling in serious foul trouble. Yeah. And what's this? This call is going to be a travel. That was definitely not a travel. I would like to retract the state. I, the refs have, I think, blown several calls that they've in this third quarter. After I said that they were doing it, I can't say that they're doing such a great job, in my opinion, anymore. I think they've blown a couple of calls. Yeah, I mean, right there, Booth clearly got rid of the ball before his feet hit the ground, and uh, that was definitely a mistake right there. But moving on, nothing to change it now. Sturkey with the ball on the wing up to Kowalczyk. So four minutes and 45 seconds. The Raiders still up 34, 31 to 24. And Geneva Eagles continue to struggle for points. Luoma goes into the lane. Sturkey dishes over to Luoma under the hole and Luoma puts it up and in. Went back door on Crawford. And Altier wrestles the ball away from Crawford. Altier with the ball on the wing. Kowalczyk to Altier. Uh, Eagles, yeah, they can taking their time. Uh, yeah, their patient approach. Time is under four minutes now, three minutes, 53 seconds. 31 to 26. And Altier looking to go to the hole. Loses the ball, but it goes off the foot of, I believe, Chris Crawford. So the Eagles will retain possession and have the ball underneath the hole. And Jeff Spikes is checking in for Chris Crawford. Red Raiders uh, really haven't given up. The ball's mostly been on the Geneva side of the floor. Oh! Number 54, Jake Coy, misses his first wide open shot right underneath the hole but follows it up and puts it back in. Yeah, after and Jeff Spikes dropped uh, an easy rebound. Now, uh, <laughs> Raiders only up by three, 31-28. Three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Devon Johnson fires from just behind the free throw line, no good. Spikes comes down with the big board. Morgan Lewis fires from inside, and that's followed up by Scott Aston. So now the Raiders up by five. I don't know if they'll score that was a they'll score that as an assist, but it worked out perfectly for the Raiders. Yeah. And Scott Aston comes out of nowhere and swats everything out of Kyle Altier. Everything. He sent that ball flying out of bounds. <laughs> Geneva Eagles taking the timeout after that. All the fans are excited. Uh, we have another chance to take a look at our sponsors, so why don't we do that right now? as soon as we uh, get a chance down here in our control room. Here we go, micro and concrete. Next we have Fisher Building and Interiors. Flame and Grill. McMillan Builder Supply Incorporated. 
Blues Reliable Heat and Air Conditioning. Palutro Insurance. Scores Fun Center and Lasertron. Sheer Style Barbershop. And Silvestro's Depot Cafe. For great food, make it Silvestro's. So the Red Raiders have a 33 to 28 lead with three minutes in the second left. And as we hear cheers erupting, that's your little sister again, Logan, performing her acrobatics, acrobatics in answering the Geneva cheerleaders. That's it's always, always a little bit of a competition between the two cheerleading squads. Just another one of those elements that really adds to the game. Really pumps up the excitement and makes it a great event for all people to come out and see. Yep. Geneva has possession of the ball after Scott Aston swats the ball out of bounds. De Jesus into Altier. Altier fakes. Sturkey with the ball up top. Raiders a little bit more relaxed than we've seen at other points in the game. Yeah. You remember those self-esteem balloons that we had in fifth grade? Yeah, I feel like that's that's the confidence that the Geneva Eagles had now. We just punctured that balloon when Scott Aston <laughs> swatted right. the ball. When the smallest man on the other on the other team swats everything out of, out of a guy, it's got to be. It's demoralizing. It's got to be demoralizing. And right there, Kyle DeJesus gets called with the offensive foul as he puts his elbow into Andrew Booth. And as the ball goes out of bounds, it'll be Red Raider possession down low. Just over two and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Johnson fires for three and misses that one. Johnson never shy to take a shot, even when it might not be the best advised. He kind of had to throw that one up in a hurry. But, you know, you like to see your players shooting. Yeah. De Jesus up to Sturkey. And the Geneva Eagles continuing to grind away, looking for a shot. De Jesus going baseline. Whistle blown and a travel called. Fans were calling for that one for a few seconds prior to the call. And finally we heard the whistle. So time to stop at two minutes and two seconds. Chris Crawford will be checking in for Devon Johnson. Red Raiders still maintain the five point lead. And the, all but one of the starting five are on the floor for the Raiders. Julian Mangano buried with foul trouble is the only one not on the floor. Yeah, Mangano with the ball up top facing out here. Uh, Aston. I'm sorry, Aston. <laughs> Talking about Julian, got him in my head. And there's Morgan Lewis with the ball on the wing. Dribbling around, long pass out to Aston. And Spikes with the ball just inside. Looks past through the lane to Crawford. Passes a little bit behind him. And it goes out of bounds. And in the second half, I think we've really seen Scott Aston step his game up a notch. He's really intense. He's shouting the order. He's kind of taking charge to a certain point, even though, you know, he's a sophomore and he can't really take charge. But, yeah, you know, I've seen him step his game up to a new level, and I, I like to see that. Yeah. Game's been relatively quiet score-wise for the past few minutes. Raiders still with a five-point lead, 33-28, to 115 left in the third quarter. And on that call, Red Raiders will have possession. We haven't seen any sort of press out of Geneva this far in the game. Uh, they're only expected to do so if they fall terribly behind. And I wouldn't say that five points is too terribly behind. No. Doing a very nice job at keeping the score very close. Lewis fires for three and drains it! So with the soft pick by Jess Spikes, the Red Raiders, and a uh, three-point by Morgan Lewis, the Red Raider lead is back up to eight, 36 to 28. Time now under a minute, 49 seconds to go in the third quarter. Geneva with a lot of ball movement outside the three-point line. And that ball touched several people's hands and feet, but Geneva winds up with it. Kowalczyk has the ball, gives it into the Jesus. This time the Raiders have it. And as Scott Aston looks at the little no-look pass over to Lewis. Pass is picked off by Altier. Kowalczyk shot no good. Crawford comes down with the big board. 13 seconds now. Red Raiders trying to push it up. There's Morgan Lewis, connects with the alley-oop slam. 
And that's exactly what everybody wanted to see. Well, that was impressive, I must say. <laughs> As time expires, Kyle Altier fires for three from uh, just across half court and drains it. That's something that you very rarely see. And that puts uh, the Eagles within seven. At the end of the third quarter, your Red Raiders are up 38 to 31. And uh, again, while we have a chance, why don't we take a look at our sponsors? Seeing that the crowd is packed uh, to, to pretty much capacity, both Geneva and the Red Raiders fans really come out. And you know, while we're waiting, I'd like to talk about kind of a legend of Red Raider cheering, Stefan Portick Stephen and Portick. Khalif James. Uh, last year they Are came they both to, here? I believe they are. Oh, man. We haven't seen them this year because they graduated last year. But That's right, busy at college. Every time they're here, they just add another element to the game. It's uh, they always Sometimes they went a little bit too far, maybe, but <laughs> a lot of people got pumped up when they were around them. I think Corey Young trying to step into those shoes with the signs, but uh, I'd say he has a ways to go. Khalif and, Khalif and Stephen were, were legends, legends of Harvey Cheering. That's right, and Logan, you and I really have to thank Stefan and uh, Khalif for our jobs because last year it was uh, it was all set up for those two to be calling the games, but uh, they opted to show their school spirit in another way and join the uh, cheering section to become key roles, and that, that freed it up for us to step in, <laughs> which I've had a great pleasure bringing you all these basketball games for the past two years. The Jesus with the ball in the corner, taking a baseline. Pass over to Kowalczyk. Now Kowalczyk taking a baseline. He looks to go up. Runs into Chris Crawford and a jump ball called. Jump ball is called. A lot of fans clamoring for an up and down right there. Call really could have gone either way. Yep. Either way, the Raiders have possession. And the arrow does go to the Raiders. So the Raiders still up by seven. 38-31. 14 seconds in to the fourth quarter. Morgan Lewis has the ball up top. It's to Andrew Booth, and Booth loses it to Altier. And there's a uh, foul called as Luoma hits the floor again. So loose ball foul called on Morgan Lewis. Not sure if I like that. Both players were in motion, but nevertheless, it does go against Morgan Lewis. That's his second of the night. Is that really only his second? That is. That's what the scoreboard's indicating. I thought I remembered it being at least his third. And Luoma fires from deep. No good. Spikes comes down with the rebounds. Quickly gets it stripped, though. That's what seems to be happening a lot this game. The Raiders are coming, coming up with the rebounds, but as soon as they bring the ball down, just getting it stripped. And that pass, I'm not sure who it was intended for, but it ended up with Chris Crawford. Morgan Lewis fires for three, drains that. So Morgan Lewis is heating things up from behind the three-point arc. I don't know if he exaggerated how easy that looked, but he just made that look effortless. And we are having technical difficulties. There um, really aren't 20 players on the court, <laughs> though it may look like it. As I was saying, Morgan Lewis can sometimes put on a good show. I think sometimes maybe he exaggerates uh, the easiness just a little bit, but uh, yep. the fans love it, and it does bring momentum to the game sometimes. Yeah. Now the Raiders are up by a full 10, 41-31. So they're making a bit of a run. But when things like that happen, it's gonna eat away at your eat away at your lead as Kyle Kowalczyk was wide open behind Morgan Lewis. Oh, I'm sorry, not Morgan, not Morgan. Maybe it was. That was Andrew, Andrew Booth. Andrew Booth. <laughs> Poor memory. And that's Morgan Lewis again. And that's another three. He was fouled on the shot, but still connects with the three. He's going to the line to shoot one. Uh, Foul on. Scoreboard is indicating number 50, but that's from a prior foul. Here we go. That foul on number 10, Jamie Altier. That's his first. Red Raiders up 44 to 33, an 11 point lead. 
Time to stop with six minutes, 23 seconds. And Lewis connects. So that was a four point play, all thanks to Morgan Lewis. Altier over to Coy. Altier with the ball on the wing, not doing much with it. Finally dribbles, gives it off to Luoma. And as Altier fires from inside, Crawford and, <laughs> Crawford and Spikes both going for the rebound. Same team, guys. As Aston's taking it the length of the floor, foul is called. That's the fifth team foul against the uh, against the Eagles. And six for the Red Raiders. So the next foul the Raiders commit will be uh, the penalty. Aston against the Jesus, taking a baseline, loads it up off the glass, no good. Spikes is right there to clean it up. Tips it back up and in. So the Raiders starting to make another run, up 14. 47 to 33, five and a half minutes left in the ball game. And Coy. Coy Some of the inexperience of Jeff Spikes coming out, I think he wasn't really in the greatest of position uh, to make that block. Gets called for the foul yep. and a chance for a cheap three points really for the Geneva Eagles. Score is 47 to 35 now in favor of the Harvey Red Raiders. That's only Spike's second foul of the night. But Jake Coy's at the free throw line, where the Eagles have been very consistent this evening. And Julie Mangano checking in for the Raiders. We know he's in foul trouble, but uh, not a bad time for him to come back into the game. Really, he, he was hot earlier. I think his smooth shooting could be going on again. And as this is a very heated game, we are uh, seeing the police start to take action. In the, in the background of your screen, I'm sure you'll see that two policemen escorting the gentleman out. Keeping things under control. Uh, you know, crowded games like this, sometimes that happens. And I'm glad to see Canesville's finest doing their job. Very nice. We thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And the referee talking with Coach Starkey a little bit. Altier's at the line shooting one and one. That foul on Morgan Lewis, his third of the night. Julian Mangano was checked back into the ball game. Remember, he sat out early in the third quarter as he drew as he uh, was hit with his fourth foul. Alter connects on his second. So the lead back down under 10. It's uh, 30, 47 to 38. Time at five minutes and six seconds to go. Man, or I'm sorry, Booth into Crawford. Crawford taking it up, no good, but he's fouled and he's going to the line. So the aggressive style of Chris Crawford pays off again. Good down low skills, as we've talked about before. He, he practices at the Y a lot, and he, he really works on his game. It, it shows when he, at this far. It, it really level. does. That foul was on number 54, Jake Coy, his second of the night, team sixth. Chris Crawford not looking as impressive at the foul line, but you know he works on it and he makes he makes at least the majority of his foul shots. Yeah. If he misses the first. He knows what he's he knows what he's done and knows how to fix it. Alex Ritchie over to Kowalczyk. And there's Ritchie who is wide open back door on Andrew Booth. That seems to have been working very much for the Geneva Eagles. They've got players on the backs of the Red Raiders. And they just drop it right over. Mangano fires for three and drains that! Morgan Lewis having an excellent night. I was, I was watching him shoot around before the game and I was just amazed. Everything he was shooting was just dropping right through. It was silk and it's, can, it's following him into the game. Kowalczyk fires from inside. <laughs> Goes up the air ball. So uh, cat calls coming from the Geneva side. They thought Chris Crawford touched the ball going out of bounds, but he cannily 
Uh, didn't touch it, he just kind of surrounded it and prevented the Geneva Eagles from getting the save. Yep, Morgan Lewis. Over to Scott Aston in the corner. Aston taking it inside. And a foul's called. Aston's going to the line to shoot one and one. Foul on number 22, Jake Luoma. I'm sorry, Nate Luoma for the Geneva Eagles. So the Red Raiders in a fairly commanding position at this point. It's 51 to 40. Three minutes and 56 seconds left in the game. Uh, but the Geneva Eagles still gunning. Uh, their fans are still in the game. However, I think that this is kind of where you'd want to be if you're a Harvey Raid Raiders fan. You don't necessarily always want to blow out. You need to be challenged. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, I think that this is, you know, they're in control at this point. Scott Aston at the free through line. And his second, no good off the back iron. <laughs> Aston does a very nice job following a shot and the Raiders retain possession. Aston has been very impressive tonight. Stepped up his game in the second half. He's grabbing, grabbing loose balls all over the court. Andrew Booth turns nothing. And Scott Aston apparently came down with a foot on the line. That ref looked a little too happy to be calling that against us. At least very emphatic in this call. Nevertheless, it's 52 to 40 with three minutes and 34 seconds, and the Eagles have the ball. Sturkey with the ball up top. Can't really do anything against Mangano. And Sturkey goes down. And the whistle blown. Foul called on number 21, Andrew Booth with the hold. Finn's not liking that one either. It looked like the Red Raiders were just playing good defense on that. Yeah. Booth has three on the night. And this is a style of referee and we haven't really seen so far where they kind of slow the game down with the fouls. Uh, you know what, in closer games though, maybe the rest tend to get a little more whistle happy. You don't want to give the game to another to the other team. Andrew Booth there that comes up with a big rebound, but bringing it down, loses it out of bounds. Raiders up by 12, 52 to 40, 322 left in the, in the ball game. Alex Ritchie with the ball up top. Over to Altier. And the refs definitely utilizing their whistles tonight. That foul called on Morgan Lewis, so that's his fourth of the night. So all the starting five, except for number 22, Scott Aston, are all in uh, foul trouble for the Raiders. Altier connects. Several question, call, questionable calls by the refs so far. But, you know, it has been a physical game. Otherwise, I understand that a lot of fans would be mad. And uh, I, I would agree that several calls have gone against the Raiders that the refs have flat out blown. Oh, yeah. So the Raiders have a 10-point uh, lead with three minutes left in the ballgame. Definitely not locked up. Both teams fighting very furiously. Mangano fires for three. That one's a little bit long. Fans turning themselves and asking, is that the first one he's missed all night? Julian Mangano, closest thing to natural shooters, the shooter the Red Raiders have. Uh, he's really smooth when he shoots, and he's had a big night tonight. Morgan Lewis comes off with the pick. Stops from the free throw line and drains it straight through. Good old fashioned stop and pop right there. Exactly. Bringing back some of the uh, a little bit old school moves. That's all right, the fundamentals work. And as the timeout is called, your Harvey Red Raiders are up 54 to 42. 220 left in the ball game. Very close game. And uh, it's, it's, it's a heated battle. That's right, a close game. And we have some close associations with our sponsors. So why don't we go <laughs> take a look? First, we have Mike Rowing Concrete. Next, we have Fisher Building and Interiors. Flame and Grill. McMillan Builders Supply Incorporated. Lou's Reliable Heat and Air Conditioning. Pelutro Insurance. 
scores Von Center and Lasertron. Sheer style barbershop. And Silvestro's for great, for great food, make it Silvestro's Depot Cafe. For those of you who may have missed some of the prior action in the ball game, very tight first half, but the second half has been uh, a little bit more exciting. The Raiders have made a few uh, very, very key runs, and now they find themselves up by 14, 54 to 42, 220 left in the ball game. That's right, they've slowly asserted themselves. Julian Mangano having a big night, and Scott Aston showing us a level that I don't think we've seen so far this season. He's really putting it all out there. This could be a very tiring week for the Red Raiders if uh, we face three games like this. Sturkey takes it all the way to the hole by himself. And now we're seeing some Geneva Eagle press. Not behind, but definitely looking to close this gap. Crawford has the ball baseline, goes up no good. And gets another chance, no good. Crawford can't buy a bucket. So Crawford collecting like crazy statistics, like three or four rebounds on that one possession, but doesn't come away with any points. Coy's shot no good over the arms of Chris Crawford. And Scott Aston, whistle blown. Aston's going to the free throw line, however. We are in the double bonus. Raiders with 10 fouls, then the Eagles with eight. Aston's getting two shots. I'm sorry, just one. Yes, one and one. Add till 10, it'll just be the single bonus. And as Chris Crawford is fiercely fighting with uh, number 44, Kyle Kowalczyk for possession of that ball, the jump ball is called and the Eagles will have possession. That was just a battle of strength right there. And the Red Raiders are up by 10, 54 to 44, with a minute 20 to go in this game in a very commanding position. And I gotta say, I think the Raiders are feeling satisfied right now. They can't let up. Gotta keep putting it out for the rest of the game. Travel called. And I think the Raiders got away with the call before that travel was called. Uh, Kyle Altier was putting up the shot from behind the three-point line. And uh, he was he was hit. All kinds of cheers raining down from the crowd. Geneva mad, Raiders mad, and then cheering the anger of the Eagles. Nate Luoma fires from deep and hits it. Raiders now up 54, 47, 105 left. And things are starting to heat up, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's kind of hard to process everything that's been going on for the last few seconds. A, a lot of action down on the floor. And many uh, cheers and jeers coming from both sides. Just at the bottom of your screen, you saw that cheerleader doing some flips. Uh, why don't we take a look at our sponsors right now? Here comes Alicia. And there you see her on the bottom of your screen. Mike Rowan and Concrete. <laughs> Next, we have Fisher Building on Interiors. As you hear the cheers from the crowd, Flame and Grill. McMillan Sup Billers Supply Incorporated. Lose Reliable Heat and Air Conditioning. Pelutro Insurance. Scores Fun Center and Lasertron. Sheer Style Barbershop. And last, we have Silvestro's Depot Cafe. And possibly drawing the biggest cheers from the crowd so far, Alicia Revko. <laughs> Turn some sister. flips, yeah. Uh, she used to be a gymnast, now she's strictly in the business of cheerleading. Basically showing up the Geneva Eagle cheerleader. Oh yeah. She definitely got a lot of applause. And people are starting to make some noise as the Red Raiders make their way back onto the floor. Very few people heading for the exit though. A lot of games, you know, the game's already been decided well before the fourth quarter. People will leave. I don't see anybody leaving right now. Geneva playing a tight press. Mangano has the ball, gives it over to Aston. Raiders were able to break that press fairly easily. And Mangano dribbling. Foul called. 
on number 12, Kyle Altier for the Geneva Eagles. And something I liked uh, out of Scott Aston, he had an open shot, a possibly open shot at three-pointer. He wisely, he calmly elected just to put it on the ground, dribble it, try and, you know, draw the foul, which he did. And, uh, you know, that's the, you can't get overexcited, and Scott Aston didn't. He put it on the ground, lose some time. Aston connects on his first. He's going to get one more, and the Raiders are up. 55 to 47, under a minute left in the ball game, 53 seconds exactly. And you need calm, concise play in order to win games. That's what Scott Aston is showing. And Aston hits his second. Kyle Altier bringing the ball up, facing Scott Aston. I like Aston's style of play. He's a little bit uh, jumpy, and he makes you makes you think about where he's going to go for the ball. On that, Kowalczyk loses the ball as he's on the floor, and Andrew Booth gives the ball the deep pass into Morgan Lewis. Booth takes the ball up strong, Crawford with the ball into the hole. He goes up and he's hit with, he's hit uh, on the hands, he's going to the line. So that foul is on number 52, that is Alex Ritchie, that's his fourth of the night. And with 34 seconds, the Red Raiders up 56 to 47. Now we're looking at the 10 fouls apiece. Crawford's getting two. Misses on his first. And Crawford drains his second. Raiders up by 10, 57-47. About a half a minute left in play. Eagles not giving up trying to maintain every second that they can. Good Raiders playing stifling defense. And Kyle Altier puts his foot on the line. He's hit with the over and back violation. Now with 26 seconds left in the game, the Red Raiders have possession and a 10 point lead. It's looking very good. Morgan Lewis off to Scott Aston. Look for the Eagles to start fouling soon. Maybe not. 15 seconds left and a whistle's blown. That foul on number 22, I believe. Jake Luoma, Nate Luoma. Why do I keep calling him Jake? Uh, it's okay, Tyler. <laughs> and Mangano gets another chance to tack on some points to his, uh, his average for the season. Doesn't convert on his first though. Misses on his second as well. Sturkey down to Luoma. Luoma throws it up and in. But even with the points, the Eagles fans are quiet. They uh, they realize that it's going to be very hard for them to put eight points on the board in eight seconds. That's right. I'm sure we'll see them foul, go for the steal. Uh, the Red Raiders, they have very good ball handlers, good ball control. I wouldn't expect to see anything too uh, juvenile, too, no. too inexperienced from them. I'm sure they'll hold on to the ball. Oh, yeah. Not going to force anything. They'll they're call time out if they need to. They're in great position and uh, looking, looking like it's going to be a pretty good victory over our NEC rivals. got a very very close race and we're gonna see all the all the teams that we're contending with for first place in the NEC this week we're gonna see uh, Edgewood on Friday and they're another team that's gonna pose quite a threat for us that's right you can't let up but I would say that this is a decisive victory to take control of the NEC Red Raiders are really establishing themselves as you would expect and uh, I this is this is like a small step for them the state tournament, the uh, district tournaments, you know, that's really where they're looking ahead to. And as Scott Aston has the ball in the fast break, Chris Crawford's hit with a technical for putting the ball up after the point. Coaches trying to maintain their composure. I, they apparently think that's kind of a cheap foul for dunking it in. How, there was a foul called on a Scott a against Scott Aston. Scott Aston was fouled, so he'll get to shoot. 
but then uh, the Geneva Eagles will get to elect somebody to shoot for them too. If this was a more critical point in the game, I'm sure the coaches would be screaming and yelling. And as Scott Aston was fouled on the, uh, oh, maybe it wasn't Chris Crawford that they hit with the technical. It must have been someone from the Eagles team as Scott Aston finds himself alone on his end of the court shooting his free throws. Hits his first and puts the Raiders up by nine. No, there, will, there was a technical there. call on Chris Crawford. Yeah. And we are sorry. We, As you can see, we are experiencing technical difficulties. Thankfully, it's not a time of huge action. Kyle Altier hits his first. Six seconds left in the game. So we'll just bring you the rest of the game as if it were radio. Yep. Converts both of them. Number 12, that's Kyle, Kyle Altier. And seven point difference between the two teams. Eagles need those seven in a mere six seconds. The Loma fires for three and trains that and just like that, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be very hard to put four points on the board in two seconds, but Jake, uh, um, Nate, Nate Luoma has definitely uh, brought this game a little bit closer. Still yeah. not much hope. Yeah, unless the Raiders do something insane like foul on the three-pointer. Yeah. This game still looks out of reach. You never know how the, the, the timekeeper plays a very integral part in these kind of games, though. It depends on if they lead that last second off the clock or if they stop it right away though. Oh yeah. That is assuming that the Geneva Eagles would make uh would well wait they'd have they'd have to steal and then make a shot, but you, you yeah. never know. That's right. Uh I actually do they Yes. Geneva has possession? Or no, the Red Raiders have, we have possession. possession. Oh that's right, because uh Altier had his technical free throws. And now it's us. So uh, they're going to need the steal. Booth with the long pass into Morgan Lewis. And Morgan Lewis slams it to end the ball game. Uh, the ref rules, rules no basket. Foul call. But that a foul was called. I believe with one second, they'll set it back up. So for all intents and purposes, this game is over. The Raiders up 54. I'm sorry, 58 to 54 with one second left on the clock. So I think if I had to pick one word to describe this big three, it would be satisfying. The Red Raiders played a hard game, but in the end, you know, they asserted themselves and they came away with a hard-fought victory. Oh, yeah. One trouble, one thing we'll have to see is how they respond to, to a fairly big win. Will they let down? Will they continue to play hard? It's, it's been a lot more physical game than it. I think they played all year. Definitely, it's it's this game has required it. They're facing a, a very scrappy Geneva Eagles team. So we'll see how that goes down the stretch. Yeah, we At still have to face them one more time this season. Yeah. At this point, though, the Red Raiders are on the top of the crop, number four, undefeated, and things are looking good at this juncture. Eagles have one man back deep. But uh, you know what, he can do whatever he wants back there because they're not gonna score four points in uh, one second. That'd, that'd be a miracle. And that's the end of the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Your Harvey Red Raiders come away with a very, very, exactly as Logan put it, satisfying victory. Final score, 58 to 44 over their NEC rival, Geneva Eagles. That's right, 58 to 54 it was. Red Raiders come away with a four point victory. It was really not as close of a game as the score indicated. They were up by 10 with as little as a minute, a little, little over a minute to go. Red Raiders didn't come out. I, it was a close game in the first half, but in the second half they came out, and they just dominated the game. That's right, they, they made several very successful runs that put them up by the points that they needed and came away with the four point victory. That's right, a great play by Julian Mangano. Another level seen by Scott Aston and all the Red Raiders playing 
brilliantly as they always do. Morgan Lewis draining a couple important threes. Good game all around by the Raiders. Uh, that's right. And before we end tonight's broadcast, let's take a look at our sponsors, those people who make all of this possible. First, First we have we have Mike Rowan Concrete at 919 Skinner Avenue in Painesville, 413-7531. Next, we have Fisher Building and Interiors at 66 Lussard Street in Painesville, 350-3882. No job is too big or too small, so please give us a call. Next, we have Flame and Grill at 1444 Menor Avenue, 352-3000. Go Harvey Red Raiders, good luck, thank you. McMillan Builders Supply Incorporated at 505 Liberty Street in Painesville, 357-5822, go Raiders. Next, we have Lou's Reliable Heat and Air Conditioning, 616 High Street in Fairport Harbor, 352-0974. They also wish us good luck, go Raiders. Palutro Insurance at 161 North State Street in Painesville, celebrating 50 years of service. Next, there's Score Spunner and Lasertron, 65 Normandy Drive in Painesville, 354-2000. Visit them online at www.scorespuncenter.com. Sheer Style Barbershop at 219 North St. Clair, 392-2399. They have a Wednesday special, $8 for kids and $10 for adults. And last, we have Silvestro's Depot Cafe at 470 Railroad Street in Painesville, 354-3851. For great food, make it Silvestro's. So we just saw a big, but certainly not easy, victory for the Harvey Red Raiders. Final score again, 58-54. And it's, it's uh, a, good, a great way to start off the week here. This is uh, Spirit Week at Harvey High School with many games. We have four games in the next eight days, especially with the big Riverside game on Saturday. It's, uh, it's a big week, and we kicked it off right. So good team victory. And with that, I'm Logan Repko. And I'm Tyler Kamiati. Thanks for watching.